NASA asteroid warning. DART mission is Earth's last line of defense. Well, we know that starting yesterday, they have an asteroid exercise drill. NASA, FEMA, various agencies of the United States, plus other uh, agencies worldwide, getting together to do a tabletop exercise, a drill, as to what they have to do concerning an impending asteroid strike. How would they defend Earth? Of course, it's an unrealistic drill because of the fact that the chance of striking Earth is uh, given to them to be only 1%. Whereas in reality, when you look at the impact craters on Earth, uh, from Google Earth, as uh, a couple of scientists have discovered doing that, and have gone on location and found that, yes, they were in fact impact craters. For example, the, the past few videos that we saw, if you check, you'll see that they found in the southwest Egypt an impact crater by Google Earth images, the same thing in Iraq. And most of the impact craters we have on Earth of asteroid impact craters are in fact head-on collisions. You, you see perfectly round impact crater, meaning it's a head-on collision. It's just like when you have a head-on collision, one car towards the other at a 90-degree angle. That's the way they have come into Earth, which means that when you know that it's coming at you at a head-on collision, and you can't get away with it from it, it's a 100% impact. 100% impact. It's not as if it's going parallel to you and may, may perhaps skim you, Although we have uh, images of Google Earth, and I keep saying this, and I'm sure you, you're, you're probably tired of hearing me by now, if you check Google Earth on top of um, just north of Latin America and also south of Latin America, you'll see as if the mantle has been uh, pushed in from the left to the right, like from west to east, by the fingers of God one on top of Latin America, one on the bottom. In fact, the one on the bottom is as if it's cut the uh, line, that little peninsula. It must have been joined with uh, Australia at one point, and it, has, it seems to have been cut by something that was perhaps a huge comet. The same thing just north of, La of uh, Latin America, South America. Um, and then you get the same thing again, an asteroid or comet impact that hit again from the west to the east, uh, in uh, Indonesia, around Papua New Guinea. So we've been hit so many times, it's just unbelievable what those impacts must have caused as far as extinction. Uh, and it's just a matter of time before another one hits us, and it's going to create chaos if that happens. This is uh, now, this um, uh, is on Express UK having to do with the NASA uh, asteroid warning system. And they have the uh, DART mission, Earth's last line of defense. So this by Tom Fish on Express UK and NASA says it's ready to um, fire a spacecraft into an asteroid, just like JAXA did in the video before this. You'll see it. they did that onto the minor planet Ryugu, which is in fact an Apollo group uh, planet, which are very near-Earth asteroid. The Apollo group asteroids are dangerous. They're between Mars and Venus, and Earth is, is right between them. Uh, you can see that we, in the, we have a, a diagram. I'll put it one here as well. It's uh, Mars, Earth, and then Venus. So uh, it's just between Earth and Venus, just outside of Earth close to Earth and wrapping around Venus, okay? And one of the Apollo asteroids that we've witnessed a couple of years ago was the Chelyabinsk, uh, Chelyabinsk uh, meteor that slammed over Russia, injuring over a thousand people. Um, so that's how dangerous they are. They come out of the sun. We can't see them when they're coming from behind the sun because of the blinding uh, solar uh, sun's rays. And uh, the other thing is that you can't catch everything out there. You know, the uh, astronauts are saying, you know, this, we're not in danger, nothing's coming at us, nothing that they know of, because there are a, a number of things that 
come at us that they don't know of. Anyway, going back to the article, uh, they have to have an asteroid protection mission, uh, uh, mission uh, 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 an Earth protection defense system. And it's not just, I don't know, NASA that has to be doing this. They have to have uh, an obligatory uh, worldwide international fund uh, and scientists, group of scientists set up to, to uh, have some kind of international defense concerning uh, Earth safety because it's an extinction level uh, event if this happens. It's not just the asteroid impact. When it impacts, it uh, turns the uh, atmosphere into boiling. It turns, it evaporates oceans and rivers and lakes. It also sets up uh, a system of um, geological changes. You have earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. You can understand what that means ash clouds, and uh, death everywhere, okay? Uh, tens of meters, if not uh, hundreds of meters of uh, ash cloud falling everywhere, God forbid. It's just a chain reaction of terrible things, let alone the tsunamis. So NASA is making ready to fire its spacecraft into an asteroid, testing Earth's last line of defense, they want to go and see what they can do, for example, it's like a test dry run, what they can do to nudge an asteroid or push an asteroid away or, you know, obliterate an asteroid, whatever. And that's what they're using space rocks to uh, aim at in order to see what they can do. Because they're just like uh, JAXA did on Ryugu, which is a, an Apollo group asteroid, which is in fact minor planets. So uh, uh, we saw that Japan Hayabusa 2 made history uh, this month, early this month, after the bombing the Ryugu asteroid in an attempt to collect the samples and bring them back to see what, what, that is, what it is. And when you see from my last video, the um, film, the, the, there was no dust that kick up. It was just very sharp shards of, of stone and rock. And uh, when you look at the film, you say, well, one of these things is going to definitely hit the Hayabusa and it's going to decommission it and it won't be able to come back. I mean, that's another danger that uh, these spaceships face, obviously, when you have pieces of debris flinging back up at them. So asteroids of all sizes are plummeting to Earth. They've been doing that for billions of years. And we see that evidence from the impact craters all over the place. And our planet is bombarded with more than 100 tons of dust and sand-sized particles every day from these uh, celestial bodies. But every few million years, objects large enough to threaten life on Earth do hit us. Patrick Michael, who is the director of research at Francis Côte d'Azur Observatory, feels that double asteroid redirect test, or DART for short, this is what NASA's name for it is, can learn a lot from the Hayabusa 2 mission of Japan. He says, for us, this is an exciting first data point to compare with simulations, but we have a much larger impact to look forward to in the future as part of the forthcoming double spacecraft asteroid impact and deflection astro uh, assessment, AIDA mission for short. In, the late, two th in late 2022, in three years, the US double asteroid redirect test or DART spacecraft, it will, is aimed to crash into the smaller of the two Didymus asteroids, Didymus meaning twins. I think from what I read, one of them, the big one is 800 meters, and the other one is 150 meters. So as with Hayabusa 2, the SCI test is shown from a, from a very distinct, clear crater, exposed subsurface material in an even lower gravity environment, but the purpose is to actually divert the orbit of this 160 meter diameter, the most minor moon of the two. So they want to divert it, meaning they want to move it, nudge it away, and uh, in a measurable way, meaning in a significant way. The DART spacecraft will have a mass of 550 uh, kilograms and will strike the Didymus asteroid at 13,400 miles an hour. It will smash into the asteroid five times smaller with a spacecraft more than 200 times larger and um, moving three times faster should create 
enough impact energy to deflect the asteroid in the first such experiment of planetary defense. So uh, we will look at, we will look forward to that in three years, see what happens. A proposed European Space Agency ESA mission called HERA, H-E-R-R-A, would then visit Didymus to, stu to study the diverted asteroid, measure its mass, and perform high-resolution mapping of the resulting impact crater. Patrick, who is serving as HERA's lead scientist, says, the actual relation between projectile size, speed, and crater size in low-gravity environments is still poorly understood, Having both small carry-on impactor SCI and HERA data on crater sizes in two different impact speed regimes will offer crucial insights. These scaling laws are also crucial on a pr practical basis because they underpin how our calculations estimated the efficiency of asteroid deflection are remote, taking account the properties of the asteroid material as well as the impact velocity involved. He says, this is why HERA is so important. Not only will we have DART's full-scale test of asteroid deflection in space, but also HERA's detailed follow-up survey to discover Didi Moon's composition and structure. HERA will also record the precise shape of the DART crater right down to centimeter scale. So building on this Hayabusa 2 impact experiment, that's the one that, would, that uh, happened uh, uh, three weeks ago on Ryugu, the Apollo asteroid, or minor moon, as we said in the previous video. Um, the uh, Hayabusa 2 impact experiment, DART and HERA, between them, will go on to close the gap in asteroid deflection techniques, bringing us in this way to a point where such a method might be used in a real-life situation. Didi Moon will easily be the smallest asteroid ever explored meaning the space rock will provide insights into uh, the cohesion of material in an environment of negligible gravity, more than a million times weaker than Earth's. So that's what they're at, um, you know, following uh, adjacent to the uh, asteroid exp um, exercise drill that they're doing this week, pretending that there's a 1% chance of an asteroid impact. Uh, you know, okay, this nice night. <laughs> if you're going to do a drill, you might as well do it at a, at least a 50% asteroid impact. I mean, 1%. <laughs> okay, what can I say? And it's a tabletop drill, by the way. It's not uh, people running around and um, actually doing things on ground. It's a tabletop stuff uh, thing. So uh, this is exciting, and uh, I still believe it's very serious, and it's just a matter of time before we get struck again. And uh, hopefully, instead of putting all these funds in military defense spending, we should uh, you know, use it to protect all of humanity from something like this, uh, because it's very serious. And it's also prophecy. It's also prophecy. If you read Revelation 8.8, 8, a big mountain fall into the sea, and a big uh, celestial body crashing into Earth. It sounds like two different episodes big mountain falling to the sea, you know, a mountain could be a volcano, a super volcanic eruption, a, a huge earthquake, uh, which of course could trigger other earthquakes in the areas. And, and the other one from the sky onto the earth is definitely a celestial body, an asteroid or a comet. So yeah, it's, we, should have, we have to be ready for this. This is on Express UK, and I'll leave a link below for you for the NASA um, asteroid deflect the, the dark mission, the uh, asteroid deflect redirect tests. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.